Okay, so let's see how to install Debian on VirtualBox. I assume that you already have VirtualBox installed, so I'll get right into it. So here's the Debian website. Open your web, web browser and go to www.debian.org. And then we need to click on download. And as you can see, the, the file is downloaded. The file size is about 670 megabytes. I already downloaded it, so I will stop this download because I already have it in my downloads folder. Now let's get back to VirtualBox and let's create a new virtual machine. We need to provide a name for the new virtual machine. I just call it Debian, Debian 12. You can change the folder to which the virtual machine will be installed to. I'll just leave here the default. And then we need to choose the ISO image. So click on this little arrow, then other, and it should be found in your downloads folder. So here it is for me, Debian 12 ISO file. Let's open this file. Great. And it should correctly identify it as Linux Debian. If it didn't, make sure that that's what's chosen here, but it should work. And you can use the VirtualBox unattended installation. It will automate some of the steps, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to use it, but feel free to use it if you want. So I'm going to skip the unattended installation. As for hardware, we need to choose how much memory we want to allocate to this virtual machine. I'm not going to use a desktop environment. So in my case, I think that about one and a half gigabytes should be more than enough. If you are going to install a desktop environment, maybe allocate a bit more, maybe two gigabytes or two and a half. I'll just go with the uh, 1600. And one processor for a server without desktop should be more than enough. And here we need to choose how much disk space we want to allocate to this new virtual machine. Once again, I'm going for a pretty minimal installation, so I'll just go with 12 gigabytes. And I'm not going to click here. I don't want to pre-allocate the full size. And this way, the virtual machine will only use the amount of disk space it actually needs. It can grow over time. It will never be beyond this limit. This is like an upper limit to the amount of space it can use, but it's not going to use it up front. It's not going to pre-allocate it. So let's finish. And now that we defined the ISO file and we configured everything, we can start the virtual machine. And you can either use the install or the graphical install. Doesn't really matter. I'll just go with the graphical install. I'll go with English, United States. Shouldn't matter too much. And here I'll just go with American English. Okay, we need to provide the host name. I'll go with Debian 12. And you can provide a domain name. I'm not going to do that, so let's continue. And here we can use the root user account, but we don't have to. So if we provide a password for the root, we will have the root account. If we don't, then this is what's written here. If we leave this field empty, the field for the root password, the root account will be disabled, okay? So we will not have a root account. And the system's initial user account will be given the power to become root using sudo, okay? So this is up to you. Like, you can create this root account and you can avoid creating it and use your user account with sudo as root. So there is no right answer here. For this installation, I am going to create the root account, but you know, you don't have to. And let's continue. And now we need to create the actual user. And this is not root, this is, this is the actual user. So we need to provide the full name for this user. And then we need to provide the username for this user, which is based on the full name usually. It doesn't have to, but you know, that's usually the case. So I'll just go with my name and continue. Now I need to provide a password for this user. So this is different than the password for the root account. So it's important to have different passwords here because it's very insecure to use the same password for root and for the user account. So if you used a password for the root account, if you created the root account and provided a password for it, here you should choose something different. And let's continue. 
And here I'll just go with Eastern, choose, you know, your time zone. Now, since I'm using a virtual machine, I'm going to use the entire virtual disk that I defined for this virtual machine. Do you remember the 12 gigabytes that I allocated? The one that I said that I don't pre-allocate the entire size up front, blah, blah, blah. So this virtual disk is the one that I'm going to use for this Debian installation. And this is why I'm going to use the entire disk. So I just choose guided, use entire disk and continue. And of course, this is going to be the disk, okay? So this is the virtual box a hard disk and here we can see its size. So this is the correct disk. Let's continue. Here we can choose if we want to have more than one partition. We can have different partitions for, for example, for the home. We, ha we can have a, a separate home partition and we can have like many different partitions for different folders. I'm just going to keep everything in one big partition. In my opinion, it's the easiest way to work. And it's also, it's even written here that it's recommended for new users. But in my opinion, even if you are not a new user, this is just, it just makes life easier. So I prefer to do it this way. And it's going to create a swap partition, one gigabyte, and then the rest is going to be the, like the, the main partition where system will be installed and home and everything else. So let's f finish partitioning and write changes to disk. And we need to approve it one last time. So write changes to disks, yes. And now the base system is being installed. Uh, the good thing about Debian is that it's, you know, it's not, the base of Debian is not too bloated, so it's not going to take too long. Okay, so this is done. It asks us if we want to scan extra installation media. This is if you have some additional packages on your disks, on your installation disk. I don't have any of that, so no. And now we need to choose a mirror that's closest to our location because once we finish the Debian installation, we're probably going to install additional packages. So if we choose a mirror that's closer to us, it's going to make things a bit faster. It doesn't matter too much. I'll just go with United States. And then we need to choose the specific mirror, blah, blah, blah. I'll go with the default one. This is if we're using a proxy. I don't. Now we need to choose if we want to opt into the popularity contest. This helps the Debian developers know which packages are the most popular. So you can opt in if you want. The default is no. I'll choose yes. Why not? And let's continue. And now we need to choose whether or not we want a desktop environment. I'm not going to install it, so I'm going to unselect this and this. But of course, if you want a desktop environment, you need to choose that you want a desktop environment, and then you need to choose which one. So you have GNOME, XFCE, KDE, and some other variants. So choose the one that you want. I'm not going to install any of them. And I strongly recommend, especially if you don't intend to use a desktop environment, I strongly recommend to install an SSH server. It will allow you to easily connect to this Debian server that we are installing now. So I will install the SSH server. And of course, standard system utils, strongly recommended to install this one. And let's continue. And now we need Grub, okay? Because <clears throat> this will help us uh, log into our operating system in this virtual machine. So yeah, go ahead and install Grub. This is also the default, so just click on continue. And here I'm going to choose my virtual disk. Okay, so this is the virtual disk we used for the Debian installation. We're also going to use it for Grub. So choose this one and continue. So while it's finishing the installation, let me tell you that I offer private tutoring on Linux and cybersecurity. So if you are interested, drop me a message and we can set up an online meeting and see how I can help you. Okay, so it's finally complete. It says that we need to remove the installation media, blah, blah, blah. We'll do it in a second. Let's continue. And now it's requesting system reboot. So the system is rebooting. And if we take a look here, look here where it says storage, if we look here at the ID secondary device, the optical drive, it's now empty. So VirtualBox is aware of what's going on and it knows that we finished the installation. So it's like it removed the ISO file out of the optical virtual disk. So this is done and that's it. Uh, Debian is now installed and we are ready to start using it. So let's log in. Let me type in my username 
and my password and we are logged in so this is how you install Debian on VirtualBox as always if you are interested in private tutoring in the fields of Linux or cybersecurity drop me a message and we can see how I can help you